Hey friends, in this video we're going to be painting a peony on canvas and we're going to be using textural layers and mark making to create a very layered and expressive and kind of roughly textured peony, which I love. I love following a sort of intuitive approach to color and to mark making and creating a piece that has lots of layers and lots of history. So I'm excited to paint this with you. All right, let's get going. Okay, so I have some inspiration photos of peonies up on my iPad. And I like to work from a couple different types of photos so that I'm not copying one specific. I can kind of draw different elements from different photos. So I'd recommend just pulling up some on Pinterest or from personal photos that you might have that can help inform your painting. So before we paint the flower, I want to lay down a textured background. So I'm using my Catalyst Wedge tool here and I'm just going to be scraping it all over my canvas. And I'm using phthalo green and blue, a um, kind of a green blue here. Actually, oh, here it is, it's marked, cobalt blue. I have it in a bottle, so I wasn't sure if I actually knew what the name of it was anymore. Here we go. Okay. And I love this sort of, variegated background. It gives some really beautiful complexity to the painting before I even start painting the flower on there. So I'm just going to get the paint up on my wedge and just keep moving it around and you can kind of scrape it and see what parts go thinner. It can be a really lovely technique. And I'm not planning anything at this point. I'm just enjoying moving the paint color around and I have learned that I enjoy when the background is a little bit darker because it provides some contrast to what I'm going to do in the rest of the painting, but you can kind of find your preference for that. There we go. And I've already prepped my canvas before this layer of color with um, a layer of gesso and I like to do gesso with sort of a rough brush and create some like sweeping strokes so that as um, I layer up my acrylics on top of it, you can start to see those really pretty sort of wishy, swooshy wave stroke marks beneath the colors. And I really love that as well, that it gives it a lot of um, character and some interesting complexity. Okay. So now, I think we've got enough of our colors on there. Actually, I wanna do a little bit. I feel like this corner is a little strange looking. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to wipe off my wedge tool here. I'm ready to use it next time. And what I like to do to start out is just to sketch my drawing a little bit, my flower shape a little bit. So I'm gonna use some white and just a little bit of one of these colors. We'll just make a light green and add some water. And I like to just really simply kind of let myself know how I'm gonna position the flower. This can help me start thinking about composition. So I think I'm gonna do the flower more up here and maybe have some leaves down here. Um, so I'm going to have that sort of be the center. And then there's lots of petals that are all layered here. I'm trying not to be super specific because if I get too specific in the drawing, I start to feel more constrained in the painting of the flower. I like to leave myself some room to be able to just go the way my brush wants to flow rather than really meticulously follow outlines. So there we go. And I think 
I'll go ahead and add just a few sort of um, leaves to kind of just help me think through maybe the direction I want some of those to go in the end, but I'm trying, all of this is subject to change. <laughs> I'm trying not to be too specific. There we go. Okay. So I am going to switch over to my bristle, more of a bristly brush. This is my number eight filbert brush. It's a hog's bristle brush from Windsor & Newton. It's a really great texture for getting kind of um, more like not smooth. I'm trying to think of the right word to get not smooth strokes, more rough textural strokes. So I'm going to use some white and I'm going to bring in some magenta. And I think I'm gonna bring in some, this is quinacridone red. And it's much more of a warm, it creates a more warm pink color. I think that looks pretty nice. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is just start just really kind of roughly filling in these petals. And because I am loving texture, I'm loving all of the character of these imperfect marks, I'm not trying to fill in the petals completely. I'm just trying to sort of rub the flat edge of my brush over the texture that's on my canvas and let the paint come off, but I'm still sort of seeing through till the to the bottom layer. And I really love how beautiful and atmospheric that is. And so that is the kind of textural mark that I'm exploring right now. And I need to make some more of my color. So we'll just swirl those together. And there's just layers of petals sort of stacking underneath here. So I'm just sort of showing the, the edges of them that show up in the, my photo references here. And then these ones are more open and we're seeing extended. And I love having this sort of background that has a lot of abstract kind of um, painterly effects going on already because I can use that to help inform how I want this painting to go. So as I'm looking, I was thinking, ooh, I really like that light green. I don't know if it'll end up showing up in the end, but um, things like that, little details in the background can kind of um, catch my eye and I'll say, ooh, I wanna keep that or I wanna cover that up or I'm gonna like shape my strokes around it. So, um, that's another sort of idea that um, I love about this sort of um, not solid background, it's a textured background. So I just am making a little bit more of a light pink now. I'm just mixing some white into that. And I'm just sort of highlighting, whoa, I got green. That happens sometimes. <laughs> You accidentally touch your other area of color. I see I touched the green right there, so I've got to wash my brush off. There we go. Let's try again. Actually, the thing I love about canvas and acrylic is that you can just come in with a paper towel and just swipe it and take off areas of wet paint that you don't want. So I just wiped that green off of there. So now I'm going to come back with my pink. Okay, make a little bit more of that light pink. And 
just adding hints of it. Kind of where the light hits the edges of these petals. And if you look closer at um, peonies, they often will have several petals all stacked together. And so it kind of reads as one petal shape, but it's really like one nested inside another or even like three of them nested together. So I'm gonna try to add a few of those sort of nested inside here. And again, I'm trying to get more of the spirit of the flower than the really crisp details of it, um, because that's what I that's what I am interested in when I'm painting flowers, is not getting so nitpicky over the details, but getting sort of the movement and the spirit of it. I feel like I want this petal to a little bit more of like a fluttery edge sticking out here. Here. This one too. A little bit more of like a ruffled edge there. Okay. So I think the flower is at a point where I need to have this layer dry to start layering more colors and more effects on top of it. So I'm going to hit it with the blow dryer and then we will keep layering. Okay, so while this sort of cools down, um, I don't really like painting on top of hot paint because <laughs> acrylic gets tacky when it's warm. So while that cools down, I'm going to get out my other paint and this is Light Pink by Liquitex Professional. And I love using unexpected colors in foliage. I think it brings it alive instead of just using like a regular palette of greens. And so I am gonna use some of this pink in my leaves and we're just gonna start layering them up. They're going to um, have texture, have a lot of fun color in them and I'm going to just really softly like drag my brush over the canvas and let the beautiful texture of the canvas show through. The leaves will probably not end up being pink in the end or at least majority pink but I'm going to start it out this way. And I, I'm gonna let the background colors kind of show through too at this point and just let it sort of be part of that leaf. I feel like I kind of want one maybe that's like bending over more. Just do some sort of indistinct shapes, sort of fill in the foliage. And I think I'm gonna have, now these are all kind of, I would call them sort of medium sized leaves. I think I'm gonna do a few bigger ones for variety. Having some things that are bigger, smaller, in between can really help the composition be more interesting. You want everything sort of the same scale. So I'm going to kind of build some bigger leaves right there. I really love this, the contrast of this pink. It's really fun. I think I'll go ahead and have a bigger leaf here. And at this point, I don't really mind if it gets over the edge of the the peony because what I'm going for is texture, interesting color blends, 
not crisp, clean edges. And we're going to mess with this painting um, for a couple layers. And so I'm not looking for things and edges to be perfect. There we go. I feel like I don't want to keep just filling in the, the leaves really evenly all the way, but I think I want one more, maybe a little bit out. Maybe actually like a stem with a leaf going that way, and a leaf going that way. There, I think we'll add one more right there. There we go. So see how nice and hazy and indistinct all this is? I love that. That's what, uh, that's what gets me really excited. I'm gonna get a bit more of this pink. I like to put my acrylics out a little bit at a time because they tend to dry if they just a whole bunch of it is sitting on your palette. So I'm going to get out a little bit more. And because I love this pink so much um, and I'm really familiar with it and I love the effects it has, um, I'm just going to put it into my peony, too. And it's interesting, once this is on top of this, the more magenta pinks, you can see how like peachy yellowy this color is. Um, so seeing that contrast is interesting. I'm just going to kind of put it on these inner petals, probably a few touches on the outer ones, too, but kind of helping those stand out. I like that. And then we'll probably just do a little bit to help it feel cohesive on the outer edges. And see how we used, um, because I'm using this peach that was used in the leaves, it's helping the whole painting look like it's cohesive and sort of tied together because I'm not using only one family of colors on the inside, sort of the flower part, and only one family of colors on the outside. I'm like mixing and matching in between them, and we're gonna keep doing that. And that really can help the painting feel much more united and like a, like all the parts are complementing, complementing each other. Okay. There, I really like that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put in the center of the flower, or at least the beginning of the center. Um, everything is gonna be sort of layered up here. So I'm gonna get some yellow, and this is cadmium yellow medium, and I'm gonna take a little bit of my quinacridone red, and we're just gonna move it over here. I like warming my yellow up with some red because um, this yellow is a little too primary yellow for my taste. So we're gonna just, actually let's start out a little bit more. Whoop, whoa, it really took a dive into orange there. I think what I want to do is get some yellow ochre. I also enjoy mixing yellow ochre into my yellows sometimes because sometimes because it um, gives it more a little bit of a more muted earthy vibe and um, that can add some complexity. So now I have actually a really more brown ochre yellow, but we're gonna go with it. This is a fine base layer. And peonies have these fluffy centers, so I'm just using like the point and the side of my brush to just sort of make little radiating strokes. And again, I'm not trying to fill the entire center with strokes. I really like when the background shows through like that. Um, I think it gives it depth. So I'm just trying to do light, quick strokes that are sort of radiating out, but I'm gonna stop there because I, I really like how that looks. Um, because I have this color and I feel like I want to tie it to the outside again, I'm going to do some strokes with it on the leaves. And as I'm building up my layers, I'm always just telling myself like, this isn't the end. This is like 
are, you know, this is a step towards where we're gonna be. So I'm not really aiming for this painting to be a pink flower with yellow leaves, but adding yellow and adding that peach um, just gives it really fun, beautiful layers and it gives complexity to the surface, which I love. And a lot of, like, as I'm adding things that I'm kind of like, hmm, I wonder what that would look like. And I'm asking questions and I'm seeing how things turn out and I'm staying curious about things. Often really beautiful effects happen that I would not have known unless I had tried it, unless I had just gone for it. So, um, and experimented. That's kind of pretty. Now, I think I'm not going to add quite as much maybe to this side. Maybe I'll just add a little bit on that one. Now, see, this is really interesting. I don't know if I've ever done this sort of orange on top of peach before, and I love it. I love that, how fun that is. Like, what a fun contrast. It's really, has some like fun, vibrant, fun, vibrant feel to it. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush. And I think we're at the point again where we need to dry so that all of this layer is set and doesn't get, um, you know, mixed in with our next layer. I want this completely dry so I'm not activating this paint and visually like mixing the pigments together with my next layer. So here we go. Okay. So now we're at the point in my process where I've gotten, I've gotten a, like a couple layers down. I've gotten some complexity to the painting. And now I want to start adding in a little bit more unexpected, um, intuitive sort of textures to give me more to work with. So I already have a lot of beautiful textures here, um, but I want to, keep layering, keep adding some more unexpected things. So this is where I'm gonna bring the wedge back in and I'm just waiting for this to cool down a little bit. So we're gonna get out Golden's Green Gold. I love this color because it creates really beautiful um, color mixtures. It's a transparent paint. You can see, you can kind of see through it really easily. And so when you layer it and scrape it on top of other colors, um, you're visually mixing the green gold with the color that's underneath it and it can be really beautiful. So I'm just getting a little bit on the edge and I'm just gonna, let's try it on the leaves first and see what happens. I'm just lightly sort of stroking it along. In some areas I like to have a lighter hand and then I'll mix it up with a more like strong stroke. And I am just gonna, I really like that. That's so pretty. So I'm gonna just go for it over the flower as well. And I still want the pink of the flower to kind of, in the end, be, I want the flower to read as pink. So um, I'm gonna do some areas of it that are a little bit lighter of an application and then other parts I might do a little heavier. So as I rub this really gently over the texture of the canvas, I'm picking up some of those strokes in the gesso that were my first layer before I did any colors. And um, you can see some really pretty effects happening there. I can also like scrape it really thin, like I can put it down and then scrape it again and it goes really thin and creates sort of lighter shades of this green color. And then I can also get it just right on the tip here and be more specific with where I put it like that. And this part of the process is just super fun for me because it's less controlled. I am deciding like where I want to place my strokes, but I can be as broad or as, um, you know, controlled as I want to be. But it also like, I don't, 
I don't know exactly what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna get interesting visual effects that I was not expecting. And um, that's what's really exciting to me and it gives me more to sort of play off of as I continue the paintings, like more to respond to. Okay, I think that's as far as I wanna go because it's starting to get really green. And um, my natural inclination is to keep going and keep going and I have to remind myself like, okay, let's stop now. <laughs> And let's, let's go from here. Let's not cover the entire thing with green. Okay, we've got to blow dry a little bit more now to set the green and dry it. Okay. So you might notice like while I'm blow drying, I'm, t I'm testing it with my finger to see if it's dry. I just keep doing that <laughs> to see if the paint comes off on my finger. And I can feel it's really hot, so I've got to give it a second to cool down, but I spend a lot of time often just sitting and thinking about my work. And so I don't, I'm not always constantly painting. So letting it cool down is a good time to kind of talk and strategize and think about what I wanna do next. So right now, I really like this dark value in the background. I like the light value of those light pinks. And then there's a lot of middle mush, um, <laughs> medium sort of values. So I want to introduce, oh, and also the other thing that's standing out to me is that this is a very warm, overall warm color painting. It's pinks, oranges, yellows, very yellow greens. The only real cool color is in the background. So my next move, I think, is to add some cooler colors to the leaves to contrast with this warm color um, warm colored flower because peonies are warm toned. Either they're white or they're like a, in the pink family or in the cream or peach family. So I'm going to pull out my next pink color. Let me think. You know what? I think I'm going to just mix white. And I just feel like doing something that's not green because I like being a rebel like that. <laughs> I like having unexpected colors. So I'm gonna mix white and ultramarine blue and create a, a light blue color. And because ultramarine blue is a, um, a purple sort of a blue. Oh, and I did it again, guys. I got my green mixed in there, so let me rinse. Because ultramarine is a blue that tends towards purple, when you mix it with white, it is almost like a periwinkle, which I love. And it sometimes I'll push that by adding in just a dab of magenta. I just move, oh, that was a lot. Magenta is super strong. I just push it a little bit more towards the periwinkle side with a dab of magenta. Let's see. Let's see how that looks. Again, it's just being exploratory and seeing what we think. There. I like this for like a, like, I like what's going on there where it's a accent color and not like the dominant color of the leaves. So I'm just going to try that. I'm just going to go around and add some little bits of it. And at this point, I start kind of thinking about what parts of the textures do I really love. Um, you can, that can be any part of your process. I try to wait and not get too attached to any part of my painting at the very beginning. But you could paint and paint and paint before you really get serious about starting to like finish up the painting, but somewhere along the line, I start thinking, what parts do I really love? What do I want to keep? What do I really like that's happening in the painting? I think I'm going to skip this section, maybe add it over here. Um, what do I want to pr start preserving, I suppose, um, and start like slowing down my process and being a little bit more careful so that I keep the parts that I like? And that can happen, like I said, that can happen anytime in your process. 
I like to wait a little bit further down the road so that I'm not feeling frozen. I'm not feeling like too precious about my painting too early on that I feel like debilitated that I can't paint freely from the beginning. Um, so that's, it's just a personal choice. Um, but I found if, if I can keep looser longer, the whole process is so much more enjoyable and fun for me. And I'm not trying to be super careful about anything for a while. Uh, I think I'll add just a little bit more here. And I think I'm just going to also add a few touches in the interest of helping it feel a little bit more cohesive. Just really slightly, a few, just little teeny strokes. And like I said, there, you know, you never know exactly what is going to end up showing in the end. Um, as long as you're continuing to build layers, you may cover up things, but a little bit of this periwinkle I'm sure is going to still stay in the petals and um, kind of visually tie together the flower and the leaves. There and just like that unexpected pop is fun. I love this color. It, it really like it almost like vibrates against these other colors. I really like that. Okay. So as I've been adding layers, it's been staying pretty indistinct, um, which I like. I like how it's like hazy and kind of, I don't know, textural, more atmospheric than clear. But I do like to have uh, some moments of clarity and usually that's the center of my flower because that's a very natural focal point. And often it's like an edge here or two of the petals or of the leaves. So like this, I love that haziness um, so I want to leave some elements, a lot of elements actually like that, but then I'm going to bring some clarity. So I think I'm going to go ahead and keep developing the center because that has only gotten one layer so far, whereas everything else has gotten several layers. So again, I'm going to try to make this yellow a little less primary. Here we go. And I'm gonna just use the tip and the light catches sort of just the, the edges, the little tips on the stamens. So I'm just gonna gently sort of stroke it and make the stroke sort of radiate out from the center. And also peonies have these sort of central little bud sorts of things in the middle. I'm gonna use my pink to sort of define some of those a little bit more. I'm gonna make it a, get a little bit of a darker color to sort of just add a bit more complexity to those. There, like that. They're usually some a sort of pinky or yellowy color in the middle there. I'm gonna use my yellow just a bit more. Keep developing the center. There, I like that. Okay, I do feel like I need to get a little bit, add a bit of depth to the middle. So I'm gonna make more of a deeper orange now and just a little bit in the middle. Maybe a dab in something darker and 
I'm being more precise and being more careful in this middle and that's giving a little bit more clarity to that section versus some of these more broadly painted areas that are more big and textural. And I like that contrast. I kind of think of it like a photo, like some areas are more in focus than others. Um, and I like that contrast. Okay, I think we're good there. Now, the flower needs, the peony needs more dark pink, I think. That's something that's kind of standing out to me. It needs a little bit more depth in there. So I am going to use my magenta. I'm just gonna pull over some of this light pink and mix the two. I don't know if I want the magenta totally on its own. I think I'm also gonna make it a slightly more warm pink. Let's go with that and see how it looks. So I'm gonna just really gently add this. It's like some, um, creases in the petals and some shadows that are sort of coming up where they tuck into the middle. And I, I really enjoy how that petal is, a lot of it is green, so I'm just gonna leave that right now. I'm not gonna try to cover up areas that I like, even if they're a wonky color, because that's the point. I like their wonkiness. I like their the unexpected, so. and then we'll just really gently I also like see how like that dark background color is showing through I kind of want to preserve that if I can in some areas because it really naturally sort of looks like a shadow softly sort of working this in here and there so the petals are coming out kind of helping them have a bit more um, like a dark place like a sh emphasizing that they're coming out of the depths of the flower with that shadow I think that's good. And now, now that there's shadows in there, now it's like, okay, the petals really need some highlights. So I'm going to get some more white. I've got a little white down here. Let's try that and see what that turns into. I don't think that's quite light enough. So I'm gonna get some more white. Okay, let's try this. So what I'm trying to do is just help, uh, that doesn't look quite right. That doesn't have to look like it has enough contrast. I'm just gonna add, go all the way and add all of that white. What I'm trying to do is just help the edges of the petals in some areas really pop out. highlights onto them. Oops. And the darker pink is kind of coming out of my bristles and mixing in with the lighter pink, which is not exactly, ah, not exactly what I wanted it to be doing. There we go. Just 
trying to more hint at this than to be too heavy handed with it. Okay. I feel like I need to rinse out that brush. That darker pink just keeps coming through. And then I'll just do that for the those petals that are the inner petals. Like have help them have a bit more distinction. And then we'll kind of take stock of what we've got and how um, how balanced it is, if it needs anything else. If we're happy with the color palette or you want to keep adjusting it some. They're sort of petals nested inside the other petals. I really like those. And then I also want to make sure that I'm kind of connecting some of these to the center. I think we can see that it coming all the way down. There we go. So that some are some petals are like reading on top of other ones. I'm just gonna go around and try to get rid of that darker pink <laughs> that was showing through my lighter strokes. There. Okay. Just sort of taking a stock now. I think I wanna add a cooler color in the leaves again. And then we'll see after that. I like, I'm liking how developed the flower is. I think I want to go for more of a turquoise. So I'm going to use um, Golden's Teal. I'm running out of room here, but I think I can squeeze it on. And I'm going to mix it with white. And we'll go ahead and use, since this white was already kind of the blue slash green white. We'll just move it over here and see what color that makes. Here we go. Oh, I like that. And I want it to be, since acrylics dry a little darker, I think I'm gonna get out some more white. And mix it and get a lighter value here, a lighter shade there. And just see how that will look on some of these. We'll see how it looks on some of these leaves. There, I like that. And again, I can make some more, um, more cool colored and other ones just have it be really subtle and it doesn't need to be every single leaf either. So I think I'm going to be more choosy. There, that kind of grouping looks good. Okay, I think I'll leave that. I think I'll leave. Whoa. That stroke came out kind of thick, so we're just gonna go with it and kind of fill it in. <laughs> Whoa, now that looks really kind of rough. There we go, or more stark is what I meant. So we're gonna roughen it up. <laughs> there, and I'm, I really enjoy leaving some of the areas a little bit more abstract. So it's a bit more open to 
interpretation what's going on. Um, we're loose and out of focus. There. I'm going to use the darker version of this teal. And add it just here or there. That's fun. I like that. And that also can create harmony when you have um, different shades of the same color. Kind of unite the painting in that in that way. I'm happy with that. Uh, <clears throat> so what is standing out to me is that this this whole area kind of lost all of the dark that was coming in between the leaves. I want to get some of that back. Um, I'm trying to think of what the best way to do it is. I think I'll probably just do it with my brush and um, well, let's actually try it. I'm gonna dry and then maybe I'll try it with my wedge tool and putting in some darker colors and see what that looks like just to kind of add some little um, divides in between some of those leaves because it got sort of all blobbed into one thing. So let's try that. Okay, I've changed out my paper because we were running out of room. So now we're going to try using my wedge tool with some of this green. It's just phthalo green and try to just separate a few of these shapes. I think I'm gonna get out my cobalt blue again and add in some of the darker blues. There, I like that. That helps the flower pop out more too. its edges kind of have more um, have more clarity against the background a little bit there 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 I really like that and I think I'm gonna add some more texture with this kind of just embrace what's going on over here now. There, and those kind of almost read like it's having a shadow now on that side. I'll probably bring in a little bit more of the lighter colors again, so let's blow dry. Okay, so it's kind of a push and pull now. So I got a little too dark, I think for my taste. So now I want to bring back in a little bit of a lighter shape here or there. And we'll just see what it looks like. It's kind of just tweaking now. But I can use, like those darker colors are now new textures that I can play off of, which is really fun. There, and I'm remembering I like that dark. I don't wanna go back and kind of do again what I was trying to soften, which is make it too light on that side. But there, I really like that. And then 
I'm also remembering <laughs> how much I love this pink. So I think I want to use it as a pop of that color over here again on the top layer now. There, and I think I like the boldness of that stroke, so I wanna do that again over here. There we go. I like that. Okay, so I feel like just what's missing over here is now having a little bit more of that light green. So I'm gonna add that in and then I think we're pretty close to being done. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse out my brush and then I have to blow dry some more so that this light pink is all set before I scrape the other color over top. Okay, so now I'm gonna get out my green and we're going to go over the pink with a little bit more green. I think I didn't clean this off yet. Sometimes when the pink gets dried on, I just have to scrape it off a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now I'm just going to get a little bit of this color. Just add the green back in to help connect it to the other areas again. I can make it a little thicker in some areas to make it a bit darker. I like that. There, and I think I'll add it to this leaf down there because it never got any. Oh, they're right here. There. I think that feels really well rounded, so I'm gonna stop there and call it done. All right. Thank you for painting with me, guys. I will see you next time. Bye.